Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Upgrades. I'm Jeremy Knoll, and joining me today, I have Stephen Green. Uh, Stephen Green is joining us for these The Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle Earth uh, upgrade episodes because he has read all the books, watched all the movies, big fan of big Lord fan of Lord of the, of the Rings. Rings yeah. So. Uh, today we are going to be going over the Food and Fellowship deck. This is actually the deck that we got the chance to reveal to everybody, and uh, we went through every card in the deck because it's got all new art, everything like that, and it's a lot of fun. It's a it's a Frodo and Sam deck. It's a I've food deck. Had the privilege of playing it. Yeah, it you a got lot to play it yeah. in our Commander versus episode, yeah. which you can go check out on the SCG Commander page. Um, and it's it's yeah, this one's a lot of fun. So. This one is has got a couple of different things going on. First off, the face cards are partners, but you only get one of the partners as a display card in the deck, which was a little awkward. It has a secondary legendary creature as your secondary commander. That is, like, legit the secondary. Yep. But then it also has another set of partners, partners that could substitute in, so we're going to talk about all those. that part's great. Yeah, it's all it's all great. This is the Halflings deck. It's headed up by Frodo Adventurous Hobbit, which is a black and a white legendary creature, Halfling Scout, 1-3, partners with Sam, Loyal Attendant. It has Vigilance, and it says whenever Frodo Adventurous Hobbit attacks, if you gained three or more life this turn, the ring tempts you. Then if Frodo is your ring bearer and the ring has tempted you two or more times this game, draw a card. Pretty good. Sam also partnered with Frodo. Sam, loyal attendant, is one green-white legendary creature, halfling peasant, 2-4, partners with Frodo. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a food token, and then activated abilities of foods you control cost one less to activate. It's like they work together. They work really well yeah, together. They, they, like, set each other up. Either of them, pretty good. Together, Quite good. Quite good. Uh, yeah, Sam, really good. specifically, giving you a food every turn you food, and yeah. making it cost less. Uh, I would say Sam, as in the books and the movie, Sam's what really keeps the story chugging along. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, he's like, all right, you got to do this. Yeah. We got to go. Here's the food. Yeah. We've got the you know pack everything. Big I'm gonna, fan of Sam. Yeah, Sam's Sam's and a great And that he's character. making the food. That's oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's in fact he's making potatoes. He is making potatoes. <laughs> great, great cards. All right, so this is uh, I believe the other face card, right? Yeah, this is the uh, other face card. It's Bilbo birthday celebrant. And he is one white, one black, one green for a two, three halfling rogue. So he could theoretically be a rogue, you know, some other time. If you would gain life, you gain that much life plus one instead. Okay. Okay. And then for two uh, green, white, black, tap it. Exile Bilbo birthday celebrant. Search your library for any number of creature cards. Put them on the battlefield, then shuffle. There is a kicker here. You can only activate this if you have 111 or more life. Yep. And we did talk about this in our reveal video, and obviously that is, you know, 11 yeah. first birthday yeah. was when it, the whole thing started yeah. off. So it's really nice callback. I, I like that they included that. I like that hurdle in a life gain deck. I, I've had some criticisms. Yeah. They got this one right. That's, now, yeah. they got this one right. Yeah, this, yeah just, they got it's, it right. it's really, like, it's, it's a huge upside. Get any number of creatures, put them onto the battlefield. So good. But that that hurdle of yeah. getting over hundred. Personally, I wish he phased out because he goes invisible instead of exiling. Instead yeah. of exiling, yeah. but it, that doesn't Just work. Phase, you yeah. can't do this more than you once. Can't, yeah, you can't. You, you only can't, have one. You got the one trick. Yeah, you get one. <laughs> so. He did disappear as far as almost everybody else was concerned at that. Party. Not Frodo, Sam, not, Pippin, and Mary. Not them, yeah. and not Gandalf, but like everybody else. He was like, later, I'm out of here. All right, so the other two, uh, which are kind of an addition here, uh, it, that you can also play as your commanders for the deck, is Mary Warden of Isengard, which is one green-white legendary cre creature halfling advisor. It's a 1-4, partners with Pippin, uh, Warden of Isengard, and says, whenever one or more artifacts enter the battlefield under your control, create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token with lifelink. This ability triggers only once each turn, which is kind of a newer, like, more common thing on, on white cards recently. And then Pippin, Warden of Isengard, is a black and a green uh, halfling advisor, 2-2. Two, two. Partners with Mary. Pay one, tap it, create a food token. Tap it, sacrifice four foods. Other creatures you control get plus three, plus three, and gain haste until end of turn. Activate only as a sorcery. Pretty good. They just kind of, they do Mary and Pippin things. They're just kind of like... Sort of. It, I mean, yeah. I don't I don't think I would have been satisfied no matter what they made these two creatures. Yeah. Um, 
obviously Mary making one one soldiers. I don't understand that, but it's magic, so yeah. you, you have to do something. Yep. They have to have abilities, and it can't be like you know the, disobeys the Lord of Gondor. Yeah, <laughs> I, I say like kind of the theme. It's because the main theme of the deck is like you know Sam and Frodo making food, gaining life, yep. doing other stuff, ring bearer stuff, and these two are just kind of off doing their own thing. But they it's are tangentially yes. related. It's yep. they're they're making food, you know, but. Yep. Outside of that, it's just kind of like I, I think thing. I like Pippin more than Mary. Um, yeah, I basically four foods is a lot of food, yeah. but he makes food, so like you'll get there. Uh, that like pseudo overrun, it's not exactly overrun. They yeah. don't get trample. They don't get the trample, but they get haste. They do get haste, and which is interesting. This deck can make tokens. Yes, um, it won't struggle to make tokens. Mm-hmm. So um, probably yeah. quite easy. I mean, the two of them in conjunction. Are going to make you'd get four one ones mm-hmm. if you made all the food with Pippin to do the yeah, overrun ability. Just, just them together. Yeah. So you'd have six creatures out, and they'd all get plus three, plus three in haste. You wouldn't get to attack with Pippin, but I mean that's that is still, threatening. Still, so still good. Yeah. All right. Looking at some of the other new cards from the deck that aren't necessarily your commanders, uh, there are twenty nine new cards in this deck specifically. Uh, most of the newer commander decks that are coming out with sets have like five or ten. They really went all out with these ones, so there are 29 new cards. We're going to look at just five of them to kind of give you an idea of uh, some other things that are going on in the deck. Uh, the first one is Feasting Hobbit. It's one in a green halfling citizen, 2-2. Two, two. Devour food, 3. And creatures with power less than Feasting Hobbit's power can't block it. Each food is plus three, plus three. Plus three, plus three. Let me tell you something. You can make some food in this deck. Yeah. And you could have a hobbit who feasted. Yeah. Um, that card's going to be, you know, if you're playing food, that's definitely just a strong card to have in there. Yeah. Uh, the pseudo unblockable on it. Yeah. I believe that it's not hard to, to amass a bunch of food. So yeah. it wouldn't be hard to have some 30-30 hobbit in here attacking people. So. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get big and it's going to start turning sideways real quick. All right. The next card we have is Gollum, Obsessed Stalker. There's one in the black for a 1-1. One, one. Uh, it's a legendary creature, Halfling Horror, mm. uh, and it has Sculpt, which means it can't be blocked by creatures with greater power. So it says, beginning of your end step, each opponent dealt damage this game by a creature named Golem, Obsessed Stalker, loses life equal to the amount of life you gain this turn. Just think about that a second. Yeah. Each player dealt damage this, this game. game loses life equal yeah. to the life you gained. It's it's a weird... I don't think we, there's been much that really tracks that sort of thing previously in Magic. I don't believe I so. this is a uniquely it new thing. It seems very unique. Now, yeah. you do have to have Gollum in play for that trigger mm-hmm. to happen, yeah. but... Um, yeah, because it is an end-step trigger, but... Probably just protect it. Yeah. Yeah. I think if you were building a deck around this, you could, like... This is one of those that's... Um, like uh, what the what's the one with like hit counters on it and stuff like that? Where you're as long as you're protecting it, you're you're gonna be able to make it happen. Yeah. Um, you're gonna be able to get each of the three people attacked at least once, yeah. and then if you can keep it in and kind of protect well, it for I mean, a while, you're gonna be able to make with them lose. Skulk, it seems likely that you'll get to like it's a one one. Yeah, yeah. So you know, any time past like turn four is likely you can just scoot this S- under the radar, right in. get that little damage hit in, and then you know you could. With a one sword, make copies of it, mm-hmm. and well, I guess they're legendary, so maybe we need a helm. Of the well, host. there's a helm of the host, yeah, yeah. That way, we get helm of the host, and then get everyone at once. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a good, good way to do it. Yeah. The next one we're looking at is in the main set, and uh, I think a lot of people have had a lot of opinions on this one online, especially your commander. It's Markwood Bats. It's three and a black creature bat, two three flying. Whenever you create or sacrifice a token, each opponent loses life. That's an interesting line of text. Yeah, people are going create wild about this. Or create sacrifice. or sacrifice. We know how big treasure is in Commander right yeah, now. Yeah, treasure is huge. And in black, you can definitely... like yeah. Red and black are like the main treasure makers. And so it's very easy. So, yeah, it's it's really interesting. Also, this, your, your sacrifice decks tend to operate on cards that put tokens in and out of play. Yeah. And, you know, two life for each one of those. Yeah. that That's... that's Quite literally, two cre- two permanents in one right there. Yeah, and each opponent. Yeah, it gets each them all. Opponent. Like, yeah, this is this is ridiculous. It's, it's, it's a, a really quite good a good common. It's quite a, <laughs> quite, a, quite a good common is yeah. correct. It is merely a common. Yeah, I think its card is. I'm extreme. thinking about like you know, blood artist is a, an uncommon. Uh, I believe Zulu Park Cutthroat was also an uncommon. Disciple of the Vault was a common, but that only did 
Uh, I that. think most of them are uncommon. I think yeah. Falconrath Aristocrat, the, I think that one from Innistrad is yeah, uncommon. I think uncommon. most of those abilities like that are uncommon. So, like the black, white, gold creatures that do it, yeah. also uncommon generally. Yeah. So. so so it's really interesting seeing it at common. Um, doesn't have a lot of effect on, on uh, Commander, but it does make sure that that card is much, much cheaper. Uh, it's going to be opened a lot. Yeah. The fact that it's in the set and the commander deck. Yeah. I mean, it's a common. It's not, it can't get too crazy. Yeah. But there's going to be so many of them uh, that you'll be able to put Merkwood Bats in your deck for years to come. And it's only going to cost you like 10 yep. cents, quarters. Probably like not that, that much. Yeah. yeah. All right. Our <laughs> next card is Treebur- Treebeard, Gracious Host. And it's two green white for a legendary creature, Treefolk. It's an O5. It has Trample Ward 2. And says, when it enters the battlefield, create two food tokens. And this other line, I like <laughs> this one. Whenever you gain life, put that many 1-1 one, one counters on target, halfling, or tree folk. So you can put them on Pippin or on Treebeard. You're going to put it's it on just, Treebeard. That's the two options. That's and, then, two options. and then suddenly, you're going to make it fly, and then suddenly you're going to kill hey, you. That's, that's... Look, allegedly, there's a lot that can be done with Treebeard, you know, uh, when you start gaining life. If you watched our episode of Commander Versus where we played these, yeah, this one definitely took me out of the game and was... It did a lot of work. It near, was, the, near yeah. the end of the game, yeah. it did a lot of work. So. Yeah, I think this card is kind of strong. You, yeah. you don't even have to be... Really, if you're playing a life gain deck... This card should be in your deck. Yeah, put that many plus one plus one counters yeah. on it. It's, it will only work with itself, but it's a trample ward, so yeah. that's that's a lot going for it. Yeah. You know, it's got protection and it tramples, so you're gonna be able to like bring it to bear very easily. Yeah. It's gonna it's gonna take it's gonna close out some games later in the game. Also, it has that line of text that we always wanna see with life game in terms of one one counters. It's put that many. That many. We don't want just one. This puts yep. them all. So it fits right in line with all those other creatures that do that. Exactly. And the last one is just a fun piece of equipment that I also thought you'd appreciate here, so that's why I put it in. Field tested frying pan, two and a white artifact equipment. Whenever or when field tested frying pan enters the battlefield, create a food token, then create a one one white halfling creature token and attach field tested frying pan to it. Equipped creature has whenever you gain life, this creature gets plus x plus x until end of turn, where x is the amount of life you gained, and it's just equipped too. So comes in with a creature on it, which is. Kind of a thing that's yeah. been a little bit more I just more like common. the flavor of this. Oh, yeah, You're the right. flavor yeah. is fantastic. Yeah, you use that fantastic. to cook potatoes. Yeah, just and fry them up. What, what they, conies and fish. I think that's like the only three things I know that they actually cook. Mm-hmm. Is he catches some rabbits. Yep. Uh, Gollum doesn't like that. He wants to eat them raw. He wants to eat them raw. Same with the fish. The fish, yep. He says, I hate it. I hate yeah, it, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I just, then, that, uh, the flavor of that is really cool because he does have a frying pan. The yeah, time. and then the, the stew, but that was like potato stew. With it was, yeah. Veggies that was rabbits. with, I think that's with the rabbits. Like yeah, yeah they the cooked rabbits. it with the rabbits. Yeah. So. so that was a, a, a kind of a cool flavor add there. And that flavor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I got Dad it. jokes coming yeah. out here. Uh, we've got some cards that we would suggest adding. Normally we do five cards that are under $5. I want a little, little. I mean, honestly, there's a lot of cheap stuff yeah. to put in here. I, I went a little bit bigger with this one, and we, we've got a few more than five, just a couple more than five, but uh, some really fun ones, some that are uh, very thematically appropriate, some that are just work really well with the deck. Uh, the first one we have is... Academy Manufacturer. Three mana, one three, artifact creature. Uh, it says if you would create a clue, food, or treasure, uh, it said create one of each. Um, as we saw, there are some cards in the deck that just like Merkwood Bats that care yeah. about you making. But you, if you get together. an Academy Manufacturer and a Merkwood Bats going, that's a machine gun. Yeah. Um, because that's three. That's Lightning Bolt. Yeah. You know me and Lightning Bolt. That's yeah. Lightning Bolt every time every you make time. one. Or, well, not Lightning Bolt when you sack one. But you can yeah. sack three, you know? You can. Yeah. You can you sack, sack your treasure you have, to pay for your yeah, clue. If you, if you have Sam out, you can sack your treasure to pay for your food. Ooh, that would be good. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. <laughs> I'd gain some life. They yeah, take some damage. That's perfect. Yeah, it's so yeah. good. Like, this card is still, it, it's been reprinted, like, once or twice at this point, and maybe a couple times. Uh, and, yeah, it's it's only a couple of bucks now. Still cheap for now, yeah. you know. Our next one is Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose. Again, another pretty obvious ad in a life gain deck. Two and a black. Legendary creature, vampire, cleric, 1-3. Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life, and you can pay three black black creatures you control gain life link until end of turn, which is going to be pretty yeah. good in this deck. Just with you sacking foods, uh, we're back on the line of both train. Yeah. It's just, it's a good thing to have because you can really whittle someone down with it. Yeah, you can whittle people, like one person down, um, giving like your, your you know, tree beard that has a bunch of token counters on it, life link. And yeah. Also, it, you know, 
with Sam Mount, it's one man in the sack of food. So yeah. then it's literally lightning bolt. Yeah, exactly. Which <laughs> you love. Yeah. There's a there's no lightning bolt in this deck, so I had to I had to include <laughs> you, some effects. You, you had to make your own lightning yeah. bolt. <laughs> Our next one here is a uh, fan favorite. Yeah. Uh this would be Bill the Pony. I figured you'd like that. It's a three and a white for a one four. It's a legendary creature, mm-hmm. horse. Mm-hmm. Um it's just it's a pony. It is a pony. Not a horse. It's a, it's pony. a tiny horse. Yeah. <laughs> we it should be legendary creature pony. Now I don't believe pony is a creature type in magic, so I no. know what they did. We can't call a pony a horse. Any of the horse people out there would be like, no, that's a pony. Okay. If you've watched uh Parks and Recreation, Little Sebastian, he's a tiny horse. He's not a pony. Yeah. No, this is an actual this, this, pony. This is a pony. He's yeah. not a horse. Uh when Bill the Pony enters the battlefield, create two food tokens. Love that, obviously. Mm-hmm. And then sacrifice a food until in the turn target creature you control. A sun's combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. Kind of a unique ability. I don't think it's going to matter too many times in the yeah. deck, but you can't have the hobbits without Bill the Pony. Like yeah. They would never have got to Mordor without Bill. So we got to include him. Yeah, it's it's one of those where it doesn't seem like it's going to do much because um, like a lot of your creatures are going to be, you know, two twos, one ones, but like, you know, Mary's a one four and uh, uh, Frodo's Sam's a one three and yeah. Sam's a two four. So like you're going to get those. And then like, but like Treebeard. Is you've got a couple of tree folks. Those usually have much higher toughness than than power. So you're gonna get a little bit in there, but yeah. Uh, our next one is Eleanor Gardner, a three and a green two four from the main set. Uh, legendary creature, halfling scout. Whenever Eleanor Gardner enters the battlefield, create a food token. At the beginning of your end step, if you sacrifice a food this turn, you may search your library for a basic land card, put that card on the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. You're gonna be sacking foods a lot. And so on your turn, as long as you have one to sacrifice, you just get to go fetch a land. A sad card, though. Yeah. Yeah, the flavor text says, her father Samwise gave her the Red Book for safekeeping before he sailed into the West. Yeah. So, you know, that's an allegory to basically Sam dying. Uh, you know, still cool. I'm glad they included it. Yeah. You know. All right. Now we have a banger, <laughs> yeah. if you will. It is Fangren Marauder which is a six mana five five. It's five colors in a green. And it says whenever an artifact is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may gain five life. Any artifact. Any I, artifact. Just my food, your treasures as well. Yep. Yeah. This is one that kind of, uh, it came out in, um, you know, in the New Phyrexia era. And it was really all about, you know, going against the the Mirrodins. And killing and, artifacts. Killing yeah. artifacts and all that. So it was like, here's a little boost, you know, to get, when you're killing those artifacts. Nowadays, with all those treasures, and you're playing all these food, this card is going to gain you an absurd amount of life, and probably get you to that 111 you need for honestly for, for Bilbo real quick. We're all really lucky this is a common. Yeah, because if this was a rare, it'd probably be 15, 20 dollars. Yeah, but since it's a common, it's very cheap, very yep. affordable. So, yep. uh, our next one I think works both in the deck and flavor wise because it is feasting troll king. Well, there's one problem. He's not a. Well, no, the trolls aren't very friendly to the hobbits. Yeah, that's uh, true. Every interaction we have with trolls, they're trying to eat them. That is true. Like the hobbits are the food. <laughs> that is true. It they still works. They don't want the fellowship, that's, that's, that's but the they do want the food. food. <laughs> yeah, that's all the food. So, tro- feasting troll kings, two green, 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 green creature, troll noble, seven six, vigilance trample. Whenever it enters the battlefield, if you cast it from your hand, create three food tokens, and then you can sacrifice three food tokens to return it from your graveyard to the battlefield, activated only during your turn. It, it's. It I'll give it well to you. It. You're gonna have food tokens. Yeah. You're gonna be able to put this in and out of play yeah. if you need to. Also, you know, a seven six vigilance trample. That that's gonna be good. That's gonna do some work. Um, someone's gonna need to swords it or yeah. path it. Otherwise, you are really gonna be able to like they they Bring go for the throat. I'll put it back in play. Yep. You're gonna do it a lot because so. it it does make the tr- the the food on its own. It doesn't if it comes back from the graveyard. But you're just gonna keep making more food. Like the the yeah. way that this deck works, it just keeps making more and more food. Okay, you, this is <laughs> yeah. And then, last but not least, we have a Late to Dinner, which is three colors and a white sorcery. It says, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Create a food token. Very simple. Just fits all parts of the theme. Mm-hmm. You're probably not returning anything too crazy, yeah. but you will be able to gain three life, you know, off this card, which is going to trigger your Frodo, if mm-hmm. that's the face card you're playing with. And that's what we really want to do is make sure we've gained three life every turn yeah. so that we're getting that ring temp because part of the ring temptation is you're going to draw this card. Yeah. But if you've gained three life with Frodo, you also get another card. So you're going to see two more cards every single time you attack, 
with your lowly one three. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this is just going to help you put whatever they kill back into play. It is it is great in the deck. However, I don't know that any hobbits would ever be placed. Secondly, you may not have thought about it. Mm -hmm. Elephant in the picture. The elephant in the picture. Elephant in the picture. <laughs> I did not think Important about that Important elephant in the picture. All right, now we're going to look at a few cards to remove. Obviously, there's a bunch of uh, different cards in this deck that you could take out. I think this deck is pretty solid. Most of the decks that they've come out with recently are pretty solid. Um, but there are a few that you probably can take out pretty easily. Uh, the first one is Shire Sheriff, and it is a Halfling Soldier. One and a white, 2-2, two, two, Vigilance. Whenever it enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice a token. When you do, exile target creature and opponent controls until Shire Sheriff leaves the battlefield. It's got that little stipulation on it, kind of like a... Hunter sort of thing where as long yeah. as it's in play, you know, that, that one's removed. More importantly, Jeremy, uh, you're arrested for gate breaking <laughs> and tearing up the rules and trespassing and bribing guards Here's with, with food. food. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Don't want to have any of that here. I like just the writing on it, tied up. He does orc have there. an orc or yeah. goblin yeah, just tied up. Literally tied up. Like <laughs> they couldn't get more tied up. So. Uh, I like the flavor of it. I think you could do a little better. Uh, yeah, maybe. Probably not. I don't, I'm not very good with ropes. I don't think I could. All right, and the next card we have is uh, Hith Lane Rope. I think I've mispronounced that, but it's fine. Someone in the comments, yeah, give me. It's fine. It's a two-mana artifact. Uh, it says Hith Lane Rope can't be sacrificed. You, for one, and tap it. Search your library for a basic land card. Put it on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. The player to your right gains control of Hith Lane. And then the other ability is to draw a card, the player to your right, again, gains control of it. Uh, I mean, honestly, we put this to cut. This is a neat card in itself, though. It is. I would I, try to put it in some group hug deck. Yes. Because then when I'm passing around, I'm making friends. That's um, kind of what I, my thought of uh, with it as yeah. well is, like, I think this is a good card. I don't know if it's necessarily good for this deck specifically, um, but it is a very good card. This is the kind of thing, like, Coveted Jewel that I really like. That kind of just like, all right, you know, we're gonna or um, what's the creature that taps to draw cards and you give it to somebody else? Uh, humble defector. Humble defector, yeah, yeah, stuff like that, which I think are really good in Commander. Yeah. They make friends, and uh, you know, other people really like it. I just have to say, thematically, the Hobbits are friends with three of the four Lord of the Rings decks. That's true. They like the Riders of Rohan. They like the Elves. Yeah. They don't like Sauron. Right. We don't want to be passing the rope to Sauron ever. Yeah. <laughs> but the other people, we pass the rope to them. As long every as Sauron's time. not yeah. on your yeah. right, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> then the last one is uh, is a reprint, Dawn of Hope, uh, one and a white enchantment. Whenever you gain life, you may pay two if you do draw a card, and then you can pay three and a white to create a one-one white soldier creature token with lifelink. It's always been like okay. Literally, it's it's part of what we took out earlier uh, in some of the other videos in the other decks. Mm -hmm. it, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, you could do better. You could do better. I mean, the effect's fine. Um, I think this is a good pre-con card. If you're yeah. playing straight out of the boxes, I think this is good. Um, but if you don't have, like, Sam out and you're paying four mana to gain three life and draw a card, that's a little... Eh. You know? Probably don't. Yeah. You'll probably save your mana yeah. to cast some... And if just creating the, you know, white soldier creature tokens is, like, good if you're playing, um, you know, Marion Pippin, but... Uh, like just to get those extra soldiers and get that buff to turn them sideways. But other than that, it's it's just okay. Only okay. Yeah. yeah. So that is what we would take out of the deck and add to the Food and Fellowship deck from The Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-earth. Let us know what cards you would put into the deck in the comments below. Also make sure to let us know what cards you would take out of the deck. Also, what would you cook in the frying pan? <laughs> other than potatoes. Other than potatoes. I mean, we know this, potatoes this, are there. The comment section okay. is just going to be potatoes. Just well, good. Then they got the they got the message. Yeah, you got it. You figured <laughs> it out. Make sure to also like, share, subscribe, ring that bell to get notified of new episodes. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. We will see you next time.